when you're trying to eat very healthy, um, you also want certain ways of flavoring your food and, and certain ways of bringing zest to your to your life, to, to your to your nutrition. Um, and you you when when we're, you're trying to maximize your health, you're trying to do that without oil, without salt, without uh, sugar. Uh, you're trying to to really just be SOS free, or as some people say, sofas free. Um, and so uh, balsamic is a way of helping to do that. And, and again, uh, this is ways to, to flavor your food um, and maximizing, still maximizing the health. So you're not using any oil, no, no salt, no sugar, um, just, just full on whole foods uh, at their best flavor. So go ahead, Chip. Take, take All right. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Dysinger. And if you are watching this Right now, I assume you're a patient of Dr. Dysinger, so you know what a wonderful doctor he is and a wonderful practice he is. But if for some reason this goes out into the ethers and other people see it, I really recommend you see Dr. Dysinger if you live anywhere in California because he could do telemedicine if you're in California. And if you don't see Dr. Dysinger, at the very least, get a lifestyle medicine doctor. It is such a game changer to go to a doctor that actually knows something about nutrition. So I'm um, Tommy balsamic is what I call him, Thomas Allen. We met, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago it was because he is literally the friendliest person I've ever met. If he was a dog, he would be a golden retriever or a yellow lab. I had heard about something called a teriyaki balsamic that had no sugar, oil, and salt. And it intrigued me because I'm SOS free. I follow actually a sofas free diet, no sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt. I learned this all from Dr. Alan Goldhammer at the True North Health Center. And I still like food with a lot of flavor, but there's no teriyaki sauces or any of those things that don't have not only salt, but a ton of sodium. So I couldn't believe this. And so I called him up and you know what? He puts his phone number on every bottle. He's on call 24 hours a day to answer all your balsamic emergencies. And he answered the phone and he was so nice. And he, and, and, and he, he sent me a sample of it. And I said, you know, if I like it, I'm the kind of person that if I like it, I tell everybody. If I don't like it, I tell nobody. I said, if I like it, I'll do a little video. And I did, and it got thousands of views. I made a, like a pineapple and fried rice and I got to know him and he has so many flavors. He'll tell you how many he has. I always forget because he's always adding new flavors based on customer suggestions, some dark, some light. But what I'm going to do after Thomas speaks is I'm actually going to do 12 recipes uh, from my latest book, Own Your Health, that use California balsamic vinegar. And I'm going to do really recipes that don't use balsamic in the traditional way. And the traditional way people think of balsamic vinegar is, as Dr. Dysinger said, as a salad dressing, which you can totally use without oil. Oil is just, it's a triumph of marketing over science. I don't understand how it became so popular. And I actually Googled why it was in salad dressing. And the only reason I, they could give is that it emulsifies. So in other words, Vinegar won't stick to the leaves. But if you chop your salad like we do at my house in a Holland bowl mill with a mezzaloon, then you don't have a problem with it sticking. So, and there's other ways to emulsify things without oil. For example, you could use mustard, which I am going to do in one of the recipes. And then the other way that balsamic vinegar has traditionally been used is as a sauce. And often it's used as a finishing sauce when the dish is done. But a lot of times it's just used as a sauce. So in my case, instead of teriyaki sauce, but I'm gonna show you other ways. I'm gonna think outside the vinegar bottle and show you other ways to use all of these wonderful flavors. And yes, there are other companies that make it, but I don't think you'll ever get as good customer service or two free samples with your order. And what I particularly like about California Balsamic is that many of the companies that make balsamic vinegar, they all make, I don't want to say they all make the same flavors, but there's always a peach and a lemon. And those are great if you like sweet vinegars, but I'm looking more for savory. And Thomas makes things like curry and sweet heat. So he has a lot more savory flavors. And as an SOS free chef, it's sweet is easy to replace. Salt isn't. So that's what I love about his vinegars. So uh, Tommy Balsamic, maybe you could take it away. And then when you're ready, I'll start the 12 recipe cooking demo. Good afternoon, chef and the plant-based community. So we're based up here in beautiful downtown Ukiah, California. The business has been here at uh, on the ballpark of 35 years and uh, same warehouse, same facility. I bought the business 25 years ago when it was a salad dressing, dessert sauce, and marinade business called Trey Classic Specialty Foods. 
And uh, we would travel around the country going to festivals to let people sample our, our flavors because we tried to be in stores. Stores are really difficult for small companies that have no exposure, uh, no name, uh, you know, the, and if you're not willing to spend thousands of dollars on advertising and specials, oh, you won't make it in supermarkets. So we decided to go the festival route. And that's what we've been doing until somebody threw a worldwide pandemic at us. And that changed everything. But uh, as Chef AJ said a little while ago, that uh, one of her followers saw me at a festival in um, Morro Bay, California, and asked about our balsamic vinegars and which ones were sugar, oil, sodium free. And I looked and I said, well, these 12 right here. And with that, uh, we, um, we had a chance to, um, she bought a small bottle of the teriyaki I told Chef AJ about it, and uh, the rest is history. That she, she she called me, and oh, I don't know if I ever told Chef AJ this, but I almost said no when she asked for samples because we don't work with restaurants. And she said she was Chef AJ, and uh, and then she put me on the straight and narrow. Oh, that was my previous life as a pastry chef. I said, oh, well, if you're not doing that, then let's chat. And and then she talked about her plant based community. And I said, oh, I'll be happy to send you some samples. And, uh, and we did. So right now, I think we are up to 33 flavors that are SOS free. And we have, uh, we're looking at uh, four more flavors to be introduced later this year and early next year. So it's a never ending uh, process of making new flavors with uh, the new flavors we're thinking about are crisp cucumber and a uh, sun-dried tomato balsamic. So those two are gonna be using fresh ingredients as well because those are the best. Right. And one thing that Thomas does, if you don't mind me interrupting, is he not only uses really good spices in his blends, but now he's using blends from local spicery, which might be another small business you'd like to get on your broadcast sometime who makes amazing SOS free spices and flavors like pepperoni that are uh, no meat, no salt. And Thomas has been buying the spices from local spicery to put in his flavors, like for example, the uh, Seven Herb Italian, which is one of my very favorites. Chef AJ told me uh, uh, last year when we, she first, she asked me to, to, to develop it. And I did thinking, oh, I have no idea how to make an Italian, but I'll figure it out. And I looked at on uh, localspicery.com, I looked on his, uh, Nick's website, and sure enough, he had a, an Italian balsamic, uh, it was, he had an Italian herb blend, and he also had a, uh, a spice blend that I also use. So he, I use two of Nick's products to make the Seven Herb Italian. And, um, and, and Chef AJ said, this is going to be your best-selling flavor. Nine months later, it has overtaken Sweet Heat to become our bestseller now. So thank you, Chef. You're on the ball again. Thank you. So without further ado, I want to get started. And Thomas, feel free to jump in if you have anything to say about how I'm using these vinegars, because Thomas does a weekly, not a weekly, a monthly cooking show on my YouTube channel. I do a daily show. Thomas comes on the first Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m. and demonstrates recipes that the viewers send in. And if he picks yours, you get two free bottles. So the first way to use vinegars in instead of just your straight up salad dressing or sauces is to macerate. And what macerate means, a lot of people maybe have been to a fancy restaurant and they'll say like, you know, an uh, ice cream with macerated berries. People think it means that it has sugar, but the word macerate simply means to soften. So you can macerate things with any liquid. Like I have right here, Charles, could you put, put, put it down a little bit? I have three of my favorite berries, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. And, and this is especially good to do, you can put it back up if you like, when your berries get old or if you're using them like to top something, which I'm going to be doing as my final recipe when I make dessert. I could just use water, but that's kind of bland and boring. And you don't need a lot of liquid to macerate. You could use orange juice or apple juice, but I find the California balsamic vinegar is amazing in macerated fruit. Berries are already a little bit soft, so you don't need a lot. If you were macerating something that was a bit harder, like peaches, plums, apples, pears, you might need a little bit more liquid and you might need to let it go longer. This will not take very long, but I have so many flavors to choose from. And I'm thinking, you know, strawberry might be really good on macerated berries, the lemon, uh, blackberry, actually any of the fruity flavors. I bet pear would be amazing or coconut, but I kind of feel like, I don't know, 
Uh, you got any, what do you think, Thomas? I'll go with what you say. Well, uh, I like the idea of the strawberry because the strawberry is so fruity and it will go well with any of the berries that you have there. Always right. take the safety seal off. Thank you very much. That's right. And so what I'm, I'm just going to take my berries and put them in a bowl. And I agree with Thomas because I would have liked to have strawberries in this blend and I just didn't buy them. And then, you know, people say, oh, it's so expensive. Here's the thing. You have to condiment responsibly. A little goes a long way. This stuff is like high octane fuel and you don't need a lot of it. You know, you could take a regular cheap balsamic vinegar and reduce it. But by the time you do that, you're not saving any money. So what's different about California balsamic is the level of acidity. Up until this brand, I never really liked vinegar because it was so sour. It's about 6% acidity and very liquidy. But California balsamic, because it's reduced, and Thomas can talk about the mother vinegar that it came from, it's 4% acidity, which is sweet. And then the sweetness comes from the grape, no added sugar. So I'm just going to put in two tablespoons of the strawberry. And I'm going to... I could just use this spoon. I'm going to stir it up and then I'm going to put it aside because like I said, I'm going to use this to top our very special surprise dessert. And by then it's going to soften, it's going to create and it's going to let make all the liquid ooze out. So for this, which is probably two or three cups of berries, I only use two tablespoons of vinegar. It smells amazing. This in itself could be a dessert. I would maybe just sprinkle it with, you could put some cacao nibs or fresh mint. And that was very easy. And I'm just put that aside for now. Maybe I'll just uh, transfer it to a pretty bowl just because everything looks better in glass. But I, I wish you could just smell what just adding the vinegar did to it. And it gave it a nice shine. So we're gonna put this aside and go to our next recipe. Chef, so the next- uh -huh. Would you be able to also macerate uh, things like cucumbers? Well, actually, there's, we're going to use a different term, and I am going to do cucumbers, but instead of macerate, we're going to marinate. And there's oh, a little bit a, difference. Because right, young macer yeah, when you macerate, you're using very little liquid. But when you marinate, you're actually using a lot. So that's a great question, and we're going to we're going to be marinating. So the next thing is is you you know especially if you're concerned about price, you can cut the vinegar. And when I say cut it, not with water or oil, but with something else. And my favorite thing to use it with this vinegar is my favorite brand of salt-free mustard, which you can no longer get at most stores, but it's very easy to get at Amazon and all those uh, natural markets. And it's actually quite inexpensive when you do that. This is the kind they use a true north it's a very good mustard if you're not salt free use whatever mustard you like but make sure you like the mustard because personally i never cared for D, uh, the dijon like grape poupon it was too strong so just make sure you like it so in this little tool i love this tool and by the way even though i'm a chef that went to culinary school i'm also a person that works full time and i'm a very lazy and messy cook and i don't like to turn my oven on because i live in the desert so everything i made today almost everything if all you had was a microwave, you probably do almost all these recipes. I love this little tool from Pampered Chef. It's a microwave steamer, and I use it to steam vegetables quickly in the microwave. When I used to travel, I would use it to cook vegetables in my hotel room. And so what I did is I cooked a bag of Trader Joe's 99-cent Brussels sprouts, and I steamed them in the Pampered Chef microwave cooker for six minutes. These are my favorite Brussels sprouts. They may, they're not organic, but because they're baby Brussels sprouts, they don't have that funky gym sock Brussels sprout smell, and they will make a Brussels sprout lover out of you. Now, I could put the marinade on right now, and it would be delicious, but what makes vegetables even more tasty is roasting them or air frying them. So I am going to take these Brussels sprouts, and I'm going to put them in my air fryer, just like this, for 20 minutes at 370, and then when it's done, I'm going to have these crunchy little nuggets of yum, and I'm going to then put the glaze on. Now, I, I tend to like everything really kind of <laughs> dark and stuff. That's maybe not so good. Dr. Dysiger can address that. But I eat a pretty much an A-plus diet, so I don't really worry about this. This is how I enjoy them. You can always choose not to air fry or roast and just eat them in their natural state of, of being um, steamed. So, okay, so would, yeah. would you ever um, cut the Brussels sprouts in half to start? Because I've often seen that. Uh, if would they be were big. Okay. 
if they were big. Now, the recipe that originally, I learned this recipe from my doctor when I was in LA named Dr. Roy Artal. He did it on episode 107 of my television show, Healthy Living with Steph AJ. And what we did is we took fresh, not frozen Brussels sprouts. They were big. We cut them in half and we roasted them. But roasting takes so much longer than air frying. That's why I started doing the air frying. Plus the air frying doesn't heat up the whole house. Okay, so we're gonna do the marinade for that. Now, okay, on, there are some nights that I teach a class and it's supposed to be a two and a half hour class and it's often a three and a half, four hour class and I'm so hungry. So I make this on class nights and I call this a curry in a hurry. And this is using my, my tied for favorite California balsamic vinegar. And I'm gonna make this recipe in real time to show you how easy it is to make. So using my Pampered Chef microwave steamer, I'm going to take broccoli. This is a half a bag of two pound bag. So this is a pound. Usually I have organic broccoli in 12 ounces from Trader Joe's. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this. And normally when I cook broccoli in my microwave, I cook it four minutes. But I want this really, really soft because I'm going to be able to mash this. I have TMJ, and when it acts up, I can barely open my mouth. So I need to have really, really soft food, but I still want to be able to eat vegetables. So this actually came out of that. And so I'm going to just stick it in the microwave for six minutes now. And as soon as it's out of the microwave, I'm going to grab a bag of rice from my freezer See, I love shortcuts because the thing is, you know, people say, oh, it's not organic. It's in a bag. Well, you know what? It's much better to eat vegetables and fruit that are conventional, that are in a bag, than to eat processed food or animal products that are not in a bag that are organic. So I love to buy, I cook rice all the time in my rice cooker, but when I'm in a hurry, I love to take the organic rice. They sell it at Trader Joe's, Sprouts, Whole Foods, Clark's, everywhere, even the regular Ralph's. And literally three minutes, you have two cups of rice and you can get the white. And if you don't do white, you can get brown. If you don't do rice at all, you can get quinoa. And then what I'm going to add to it, you'll see very easy ingredients that you might already have in your house. So that's recipe number four. Number five. So Thomas said, what about uh, pickles? Okay, so let's do some pickles. Now, uh, the, the great thing about California balsamics is I've become kind of like almost a sommelier mixing these flavors. Thomas has a lot of new flavors like ginger, and I'll have a lot of fun mixing flavors when I do things. But of course, once you find a flavor you like, you can stick with it. I'm just looking for my cucumber. Uh, okay. Hey, cucumber. Do you see a cucumber anywhere? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's uh, peeled. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Can't make pickles without a cucumber. Aha, something was on it. So I have here a cucumber that I peeled. And you could use small, you could use the small ones, the Persian ones, that's fine. This is just what I have. I, unless you have really good knife skills, I'm gonna recommend a mandolin. And I always recommend safety first. It drives me crazy when these chefs come on my show, and don't use a glove. It's not worth it to take off your thumb. I can give you a link to where I got this one. I love this mandolin because when it's closed, it's safe and it has three different levels and it has a slice or a julienne. And so I'm just going to take my cucumber and make little slices. So these actually aren't gonna be pickles as much as they're gonna be slices of marinated. I think I'm gonna do level two. Yeah, two, oops, oh wait. I think it would help if I got it in the, uh, <laughs> in the thing. But you can do them as thick or as... <laughs> Jeff, you're missing the bowl. <laughs> You've only got two in the bowl so far. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, we should go on the road. You and me, we both have done stand up. You, so you've got anyway. your comedy class right there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, the thing is, this is this is the number two, and the number one was making it a little bit too thin. But this is. Um, Mm. I'm just slicing these thin and marinated cucumbers are delicious on a salad. But like I said, you can buy the really tiny ones. And so you're actually making pickles and, you know, fermented food is great. But the problem with pickles, unless you are Chef Bravo at True North that knows how to make them without salt, he'd be a great guest for you, by the way, he's a wonderful chef. So the other thing that chefs do is they try to get that little nub. So it's better to just eat it or do something else with it. So I'm going to, my counter thankfully was just clean. So I'm going to take my cucumbers. I actually do like the Persian cucumbers better because they don't have all these seeds, but this is what I had. So it's still going to be yummy. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add California balsamic and I'm just going to stick it in the refrigerator and tomorrow they're going to get really soft. So uh, I think a good flavor for pickles 
would be dill mustard. What do you think, Thomas? Uh, dill mustard seed is wonderful with that. Yeah. So I just want to cover it up. And, you know, if you're worried, if you think, oh, my gosh, it's using too much, then do half California balsamic and half, you know, some other vinegar that's not as expensive. So you just want to cover it. And then, now, you know. Chef, tomorrow when you've eaten those cucumbers, would you be able to add more cucumbers to that and keep using it? Oh, my God. I, you can add almost ad infinitum. The reason you can't go forever, because eventually you'll run out of vinegar, but yes, you, you never have to throw away the vinegar that's in here. You can keep adding to it. And you know what? You can do this with any vegetable. You can do this with carrots sliced very thin. The thing is, is a, a hard vegetable, you're going to have to cut thinner and you're going to have to marinate even longer. So these are going to be my marinated cucumbers. And then I'm going to stick them in the fridge and maybe every now and then give it a little shake. These are great on a salad probably use them as a side dish for a, uh, even on a sandwich. So the other thing we're going to do is, and this is might even be better than cucumbers, is we're gonna do marinated onions. And for that, I'm going to use the ruby red onion. But again, uh, any flavor that you like, I wouldn't probably do chocolate with onion, but almost any flavor would work. And so what I'm gonna do is put my glove back on. And this time I'm gonna do it over the thing. This is a sweet onion, but you could do any onion you want. You could do a red onion or a white onion. So I'm cutting it thin. And again, I'm not getting it in the bowl and I don't know why. There we go. I could have done some of this in advance, but I, I just want to show you it doesn't take that long. I don't know if you can buy onions already sliced at the store. I know you can buy them already chopped. So again, I don't have to do all of them right now. I just want you to get the idea. And then of course we wanna separate these into rings. And these are good on a, on a veggie burger or like I said, on a salad. So we just wanna separate these, you know, because uh, we wanna get the individual rings. I'm a huge fan of doing that with uh, portobello mushrooms. Yes. So. When we talk about marinating, uh, one of the things, and I'm not doing this because I didn't want to have to move and go to the stove and cook, but you can take your favorite flavor of California balsamic, and for me, it would be the seven herb Italian. You can marinate portobello mushrooms overnight and then grill them in a grill pan or a nonstick pan. And you can also do that with skewers. I actually have a recipe on my YouTube channel where I'm doing that. So yes, it makes an excellent marinade. So you just take out this little funky piece that's there. There's a couple of them. And because I didn't cut the top off. All right, so this looks pretty good. And so now I'm going to cover it with the ruby red onion. And if I don't have enough, that's okay, because I know where to get it, but I'll just add a different flavor. So uh, what have I got here that's savory? Uh, How about sweet know. heat? Oh, sweet heat. That sounds actually kind of interesting. That might get it hot. Um, now, I'm happy to say that sweet heat is wonderfully mild, and that is my favorite combination of sweet heat and ruby red onion. I have been putting that on vegetable stir fries and the portobello mushrooms, um, and I, that will always be my favorite combi combination. You know, I have a kind of, I, I don't know what you think about this idea, Thomas, but I was thinking maybe a little pineapple. Oh, with that, absolutely. And, and even your... Uh, um, and, and, and the, any of the, the uh, savory ones, even the curry, uh, could go good with that as well. Because if you're just going to be munching on those and putting them on burgers and whatnot, uh, the veggie burgers yeah. and portobellas and sandwiches, oh, it's such good flavor. So we're going to put this in the fridge. And then every now and then I might shake it or stir it. And then tomorrow I'm going to have marinated onions. And the great thing is, is this stuff doesn't go bad. I mean, it, it, it keeps for months, doesn't it, Thomas? Vinegar is a natural preservative in itself. So you can, uh, it will last uh, two years when you get a bottle. So, but how long will, you know, bottles really last? Oh, genuine, anywhere from four to six weeks before it's gone. Uh, but uh, if you have a bottle that's been in there for over a year, it's still good. Great. So one of the other ways to use it, and this is especially good if you're somebody struggling to get off soda, is to make a soda. <laughs> that sounds weird. Why am I making a soda if I'm struggling to get off soda? Because it has far less sugar. Yes, there are carbohydrates in this. It's from the grapes, not from sugar, but it's still better than drinking a Coke or God forbid, a Diet Coke with all those chemicals that has about 120 calories. You can have a soda 
for about 35 calories, because I believe Thomas is the white. Tell, tell us about the caloric content while I get my uh, beverage. Uh, all of the dark balsamic vinegars per tablespoon, 36 calories for dark balsamic and 30 calories for white balsamic. Uh, why is that? I don't know, uh, but that's just what the nutrition uh, information says. Uh, we're getting our balsamic from the Modena region of Italy and we get them in uh, 58 gallon drums. And so the nutritional information is on the drum. And so that's where we get it. And we also put that same information just below the picture on uh, our website for each flavor so people can see. Great. So my broccoli is really steamed and it's really, really soft. And we're gonna use that in a minute, but I'm already gonna do something else. Put my rice in for three minutes while I show you how to make an Italian soda. So there's a couple ways to do it. And again, I would recommend a balsamic that is a, a sweet one. Most of the sweet flavors are white with the exception of cherry, chocolate, and apricot, which are dark. I mean, I wouldn't want to put curry or sweet heat in my soda. So what you're going to want is either a sparkling water of some kind, or they have these sodas at Trader Joe's and Sprouts and all different places. I'll show you, I have a few flavors. And they are called Spinthrift. And they're basically soda with just a little bit of juice in it. So my favorite flavor, and Dr. Dysinger would probably like this because I'm with him, I love the grapefruit vinegar. My favorite flavor is vinegar. Uh, my favorite flavor is grapefruit. And this one has the most calories, all of 17. It's got a squeeze of juice. A lot of these have zero calories. They have flavors like lime and lemon, pineapple. So what I do is I put one tablespoon of vinegar in this soda and it's very, very sweet and I match it. So for example, when I'm doing pineapple, I use the pineapple vinegar. When I'm doing lime, I'll either use the Persian lime vinegar or I'll use lemon and then I'll have a seven up. So if I was doing this flavor, which is cranberry raspberry, I might use the raspberry. And so again, these are still very, very sweet. I mean, if you're somebody that really is struggling to get off sugar, I suppose you could use one and a half tablespoon or two, but one really is enough. So I take a pretty glass and Charles, you might want to drink this. I put my thing in. Actually, that doesn't hold the whole thing. So let me get, I'm going to show you the glass I really drink from because I love Charlie Brown and peanuts. So it, it actually, it all fits in this glass better. And then it'll be the ratio right. And try to use a glass straw if you can out of respect for the environment. So there we have that. And then I'm going to take my sunrise. Where is it? Yeah. Thomas, you need to sell like a like a wine thing for our vinegar so that we can we can do these. So now I need to find my little tablespoon measure, which I used for my berries. All right. Well, luckily I'm in my own kitchen. So there we go. This is a half tablespoon measure. So if you see me do two, please know that this is only one tablespoon. One tablespoon. Stir it up. And this would be this like it's like having a cocktail without alcohol. You feel so grown up. I like to put a little ice in it because I like things extra cold. And then you don't feel like you're left out. You have a real special drink. And you can also put a wedge of lime or wedge of lemon uh, to make it look like uh, if you're out for, or out anywhere. You know, this is so good. And when I had my housewarming party when we moved here two years ago, Everybody brought me vinegar because I tell people, don't give me anything unless I can eat it, you know, because I don't need any stuff. And I set up a bar with all the vinegars and people were making, these are people that weren't even vegan. These were neighbors and people were going crazy making their own sodas and they were having a lot of fun. If you'd like to taste this, you can. Okay, something just beat. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to go back to the curry in a hurry. And this is my bag of cooked rice and... I've got to, I've just got to drain the water from my broccoli, which I will do right now. I love this little thing because it's got these little holes and I can drain the water and I'm going to save that water. I use it to make broth or pot liquor and I'll drink it because there's a lot of nutrients in there. So then in this bowl, I have a little bit of scallion that I chopped and yellow raisins. I like yellow raisins better. I don't know, I just think they're prettier and they're also sweeter. And then I'm gonna take a fork and I'm gonna mash my broccoli. That's why I cooked it an extra two minutes. Like I say, normally I like it al dente at four minutes in the microwave, but I'm purposely trying to get it soft 
because it just makes it easier to eat when my jaw is acting up. So I'm gonna smush it. And the thing is, is you don't need that much vinegar. The vinegar I use in this is curry and, and, and two tablespoons is enough for me in this, but if you wanna use more, of course you can. And then I'm gonna take my rice. Again, this is good with brown as well. White rice is my guilty pleasure. I don't feel bad about it because <laughs> I, mean, I know there are some plant-based doctors, not Dr. Dysinger, that wanna make you feel bad for eating white rice but not Dr. Dysinger, I don't think, but maybe he does. I don't think he would do that, but anyway, so I'm, mush I'm mushing it up. You see how I'm mushing it up? So it's, it's more like a, a dish and it's just, the broccoli just kind of melts in there. And it's just a great way to get people to eat vegetables when it's really small and they don't have to really chew it. So I'm gonna take my curry and Thomas taught me that you have to shake it like nine to three. Don't try this at home. Don't shake it up and down. Cause sometimes when you get a new bottle, all the spices are in the top. So you can take like a little chopstick and just kind of move it around. And again, I'm not gonna measure cause I do this all the time, but that's enough. And that's probably two tablespoons. And then I'm going to add in my raisins and my scallions. And again, these are ingredients I always have in my house. And this tastes amazing. It smells amazing. And it's really filling. I'll eat the whole thing as a meal and then I'll have some kind of fruit or fruit or oat dessert. And I look forward to having this once a week on the night I teach because it's so easy. A child or a husband can do it. So I call this curried broccoli rice, curry in a hurry. Jeff, do um, uh, most of your recipes that you enjoy have just two or three ingredients? Yes. All right. One of the things I learned at culinary school is to try to make your recipes have seven ingredients or less. And that didn't include things like salt, which of course we used back then. And I find that, you know, I'm not a chefy chef. And if, if, if the ingredients are too hard to find or too complicated, you're not going to do it. So there we have, it's basically a, just a delicious curried rice dish and so easy to make. It's creamy and it's yummy. So I, tr I try to use as few ingredients as possible in all my recipes. So speaking of which, the next recipe has two ingredients. And guess what one of the ingredients is? California balsamic in <laughs> my, actually this might be my favorite flavor now. Um, I, I kind of go back and forth, but this is the smoked hickory. You can tell it might be my favorite because it's the only one that I have the, whatever this is called on to, because Four it's spots. the only one I put it on because we're going to use it also in our Brussels sprouts, which of course you don't have to use the flavors that I'm telling you to use. Of course you use what you like, but for barbecue sauce, this is my favorite. I just wanna show you this tool that I got from Tupperware because it's really cool. It's a can opener that doesn't cut you. And you just, it's both for left-handed and right-handed people it can go either way. And I learned about this when I was a culinary instructor at the Braille Institute, because most cans leave a sharp edge, but this one doesn't because of the fact that it lifts it up. Now, again, I generally don't measure, but if you want to measure, do four tablespoons, four tablespoons. I don't have anything to put barbecue sauce on right now. We had French fries last night, but we'll probably have them again. By French fries, I mean French fries made in the air fryer without oil or salt or sugar, of course. But you can actually do this, like if you have ketchup, uh, you can't buy, at least, yes, you can. If you go for Dylan Holmes while you're rolling, you can buy SOS free ketchup. But in a regular store, you can only find ketchup without sugar. It will still have salt. But what you can do is you can bump up any ketchup with a little vinegar and make it really special. So one of the things that's really good in ketchup is just the tiniest bit of sweet heat because then you have just, it's better than ketchup is what I would call it. And if you can take it hot, like Dr. Greger, this is his favorite flavor, the blazing habanero. But my favorite for barbecue sauce, and I have barbecue sauce recipes that are delicious, but you got to roast the onion and roast the pepper. Hey, with this one, you just take the tomato paste. You just take an, e oop, an equal amount of your favorite flavor. And sometimes I mix them, Thomas. I, I sometimes, like I say, I'm a sommelier. Like sometimes I'll go, oh, I'll just put a little bit of ginger in and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And the other thing, and I didn't put this in my 12 ways to use California balsamic, so we maybe now could get up to 13 ways, and that doesn't include as salad or sauce, is as hot sauce. So the blazing habanero, you can use in a soup, in any recipe, just a couple of drops. That deep is the air fryer. And so... 
but of course I'd make a lot more of this. And one of the things I do, I like to mix and match. I like to add the tiniest bit of sweet heat just to give it a little bump. And then we have our barbecue sauce. And you know, barbecue sauce happens to be my favorite condiment, but look at the label, sugar, salt, and often oil. So this is so good on fries, on everything. And then I save this, I often freeze it for some of my other recipes that I often make. Okay, so our Brussels sprouts are ready. And so what I'm gonna do now is put them, I, this is dirty, but that's okay because I'm the one eating it and it's a vegetable. So now we have our air fried Brussels sprouts right there. And I think I did it at 370. Usually I do it at 400, but then they would get so dark. You'd like say like, what kind of crazy chef is this eating her food all darkened, like blackened, but there we go. So I'm gonna put them in here just because it's really easy to shake it here. And if you need a measurement, I would say two tablespoons, two tablespoons. But again, usually I don't measure. I just kind of give a squeeze of the mustard and then the vinegar. I, I tried this with teriyaki and it was good, but I always go back to sweet, uh, to, to, excuse me, to, uh, to this smoked. So put some of that. And by the way, it doesn't need the mustard. You can do it just with the vinegar, but the mustard gives it a nice flavor and you don't need as much vinegar. And then I just shake. That's how you get your exercise. You just shake it around, boom, 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 until, oh, beautiful. Let me get a plate because plating, I, um, I had a wonderful SOS free chef on my show today that Dr. Furman loves named Ma Martin Oswald. And he had the most beautiful plating. And he said, that's why we can charge $10 more at the restaurant just for the plating. So if you do it like this, it's like, it doesn't look that good. But if we put it on a nice white plate, maybe we can get a different Oh, look at that. I, I mean, I wish you guys could taste how good this tastes right now because it is so good. And I never ate Brussels sprouts until I tried this marinade and it made a Brussels sprout lover out of me. So, you know, when people tell me, so in my ultimate weight loss program, I recommend people eat two pounds of vegetables a day. One pound, not as the only thing for breakfast, but as part of the breakfast and another pound before, or, you know, you can eat more than two. That's the minimum. People say, I could never eat a pound of vegetables. Really? You couldn't eat this little tiny plate of food. I can eat like 10 of these. So this is a great way to make vegetables. It works on any vegetable. We've done this at a spa called Rancho La Puerta, where I get to teach in Mexico, where they go to the garden, they pick their favorite vegetable, like turnips or cauliflower, and we still roast it and we do this marinade. Okay. So now... Let's see, I'm not, I, I've lost count about how many recipes we're doing. I know we have three that are gonna be in the blender. So what we're gonna do is make a pasta salad. And uh, I personally don't eat pasta. It's too processed for me. And I, I, you know, I used to be obese and I don't like to eat anything that has a caloric density higher than 600, but that's just me. But a lot of people do eat pasta, but you could do this with zucchini noodles, spiralized zucchini noodles, which I've done. But if you eat pasta, you cook it up, and then you chill it. So I'm not gonna measure for this one. You don't need to. And my hands are clean, so I'll just use my hands. And uh, uh, just in case you're wondering, the pasta I use in my, is Trader Joe's. I work gluten-free here, or at least I am. So uh, this one, and you could also use a lentil pasta or a chickpea pasta or an edamame pasta. So this one looks and tastes like pasta. So then we're gonna just add stuff to it to make it kind of taste like pizza. And what we're gonna add is some sun-dried tomatoes. I don't know if you know this, but it takes four pounds of tomatoes to make this little three ounce bag of sun-dried tomatoes. So even though it's not salty in flavor, it's concentrated, kind of that umami flavor. So you kind of don't miss the salt. So I'm going to add my sun-dried tomatoes and I'm going to add some olives once I find them. There they are. And it's how you really can't find olives without salt. So I just rinsed them, soaked them really good. And one thing that's also really great in here is artichoke hearts. These have nothing added. The ones in cans have salt. So we're just gonna add the artichoke hearts and you can leave them like that or what you can do and often I do, I just take my food scissors and sometimes I'll just cut them just a little bit, you know, so people uh, aren't getting such a big artichoke in their 
bite. Uh, the heart is the best part. Artichokes are just a wonderful vegetable. And that is reason enough to get an instant pot if you don't have an like, instant pot because on the stove, artichokes can take an hour to cook. But in the instant pot, you can do four jumbo artichokes in about seven minutes. I'll probably need to add more pasta to this. I'll see how it goes. I like the other stuff better than the pasta myself. And again, you could chop this as small or as not small as you like. And uh, I need my tongs. Let's see. Here we go. St. Anthony. There you go. And so then, oh, basil, fresh. So uh, I like to cut it very finely with these wonderful, I love tools. So these are called herb scissors. And so what they do is they make these little ribbons for you. Kind of cool so that you don't have big hunks. Of course, I just had a big hunk right there after I said it. A gift from Sharon McRae, another SOS free enthusiast who's a wonderful person to get kids to eat healthy. So we're just gonna add the fresh basil. Uh, Robert Cheek, a plant-based athlete, has a similar recipe in his book. He uses chickpeas in his, so you could certainly add that if you wanted. Oh, smell, fresh basil is smells. And Thomas actually has a flavor of vinegar, basil, which would probably be very good in this recipe. However, this is what I really love, the Seven Herb Italian. And the reason I told Thomas I thought it would be his best-selling flavor is because so many people uh, like Italian dressing. They're used to like the Seven Seas or the little shaker jar that they had growing up. And I was cheating on Thomas buying another company because Thomas didn't have one that tasted like Italian because that's my husband's favorite dressing. And so now we can be monogamous, me and Thomas, because he has seven herb Italian. And then this is the dressing for the pasta salad. So again, my guess is you would add up to a half a cup. It doesn't need a lot because again, with quality like this, you don't need to drench it like you do when you're having standard American fare. So I'm just going to mix it up. That almost looks like I even put too much dressing on. And what's interesting is I've served this to regular people and they actually thought it had oil. It doesn't, but look how delicious that looks and healthy and yummy. And Charles, since you're the one that's going to eat us, do you like the ratio of, of pasta or do you think you would like more pasta? In? A little more pasta. See, he's the one that's going to have it for dinner. So let's add a little more pasta. See, I'm the opposite. I like more stuff. He likes more pasta. There we go. Look at that. And this will keep a few days in the fridge. And we still have three more recipes. And I, I might, it's my goal to get you guys out in time. Okay, there we go. So delicious pasta salad. So, Thomas, you've tried this, right? Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. a that's a no-brainer. I'm just not a big fan of olives in my salads. Then leave the olives out. Leave, I, just it, leave them out. If you, were, if you were somebody that was only going to want to try one, and Thomas will give you two free samples with my name, I would recommend this because this tastes exactly like Italian dressing that you're used to, and you can use it straight up as dressing and, as your, as, and to marinate things. Okay, just need to move this aside. And then next, we're going to do a salad that I love, and this is a coleslaw. And I call it the world's best coleslaw because I don't like coleslaw, but I like this. And again, I'm lazy. I buy stuff in bags. Shoot me on YouTube. They're always bashing me for doing that. But I use the bags for when I pick up my dog's, you know, business. Uh, so I like. if you can find the angel hair coleslaw, I like it better because it's really uh, small. So I put one bag of the angel hair, one bag of the purple shredded, which I love purple cabbage, and one bag of the carrots. So those are the three things, and you can buy them at least by me at Sprouts. And then we have a cup of scallions, which try to use the green part of the onion if you can. And again, a cup of yellow raisins. There. Now, how are we going to make the dressing? Because we don't want to be using a whole bottle of vinegar. So we're not going to. We're going to just use a half a cup of the pineapple. But what we're going to do to make it creamy, like coleslaw that has mayonnaise, and to up the nutrition is we're going to use cauliflower. So I'm rewriting my book on process that I wrote 10 years ago where I didn't know anywhere as near as much as I know now. And uh, so to get creaminess, I was always using a lot of nuts and nuts are healthy, don't get me wrong. But for some of us that are food addicts that are struggling with weight, we can't really eat very many, if at all of them. So they're unparalleled for creaminess as is tofu, but unfortunately I'm allergic to soy. So then I started using beans, and then I became allergic to those. So I figured, how can I get people to eat more vegetables and keep creaminess? And the secret is cauliflower. 
I steamed up 24 ounces, which is two bags of cauliflower in my little pampered chef thing. I chilled it because I want my coleslaw cold. And what's nice about cauliflower is cauliflower, you know, Brussels sprouts, they're not for everybody. They have a distinct smell. They have a distinct taste. Cauliflower is like Switzerland. It's so neutral. You can't hate it because it has no taste or smell. It'll take on the taste or smell of whatever you have. So in the blender, I have that with my half a cup of the pineapple. Charles, do you see the top of the blender? Mm. You can't blend without a top. I can tell you a story about that if you like, but it's not a good idea. Um, Oh, here it is. Uh, <laughs> so I make this dressing. Oh, by the way, another thing about California balsamic vinegar is don't recycle the bottles, reuse them. When my bottle is empty, I put it in the dishwasher, the label comes out, and then I also make my own salad dressings every week. My favorite is my lemon poppy seed, and I use California balsamic vinegar to, to house it in. A couple of, last year, before the pandemic, I had a concussion. And uh, I wasn't thinking clearly all the time. And so when I made my lemon poppy seed dressing, I made a four times batch and I had everything measured and I turned the blender on without the top on. I got to tell you, we, two years later, we still find poppy seeds in the little crevices. So always make sure you have the blender on before you blend. So what's great about cauliflower is so you can make mayonnaise out of it. You can make, um, you know, like uh, just any kind of creamy dessert or not dessert. So there we have it. And we're going to put it on this coleslaw. And the first time I made this, I'm not kidding, I ate half of this. And I'm not a coleslaw fan because I've never been a mayonnaise fan. I don't know why. I just, ugh, growing up, I just, we never had mayonnaise and I thought it was kind of weird and gross. My mom used something called Miracle Whip if we were ever going to have anything like that. So, Anyway, this is yummy. And then we're just gonna mix it up. Chef, when you made that the first time uh, a, a year and a half ago, and uh, my wife, Ethel, she said, oh, I'm making that immediately. So the very next day, we made it exactly like you're making it now. And she said what you said, this is so good. And the one thing that I ended up doing was, when I had my plate, my bowl uh, of that, I put one more little extra uh, uh, half a teaspoon of the pineapple right over my own serving to really taste the pineapple. And that's why I, that, that's what I went, oh, that is killer. See, now that's a good idea. And what Thomas is talking about is using it as a finishing sauce. And it, it's very pretty to plate things with balsamic. So I'm gonna spend more time when you guys aren't watching you know, I'm going to stir this up better, but but you get the idea. And I'll tell you, this is just so yummy and delicious. And it almost is like eating dessert, except that it's salad. And, and if I can find a way to get people to eat more vegetables, and if that's what it takes, you know, Dr. Alan Goldhammer calls these soda pop vinegars. And I don't think that's an insult to me. I made soda pop out of it. It's, it's again, if you can't, you know, condiment responsibly. I got an email yesterday, somebody, I eat the whole bottle. Well, then maybe it's not for you. When in doubt, leave it out. But for those of us that can, I find that what California balsamic does is just gets people to eat more vegetables. And since most Americans eat a dismal amount, they're doing a great job. So there you have the best coleslaw I ever ate. And then we are going to move on to apple fig mustard dressing. I'm just going to quickly uh, rinse my blender and get the rest of my ingredients. So I was at the Balance for Life where a wonderful doctor who's SOS free named Dr. Frank Sabatino used to work. I was there on a retreat and his son Colin who was the chef made this wonderful apple fig mustard dressing but he didn't give us the recipe so I tried to recreate it at home as best I could and what's nice about it is it's only three ingredients. California balsamic fig, apple and mustard. And again, any way you can get people by any greens necessary. So I'm going to do, it's okay if my blender's not perfect because I'm going from sweet to sweet, is I'm going to take an apple and I happen to like the Envy apple. They're my favorite. They are the envy of all apples in my opinion because they're just really sweet and delicious. You know what I'm looking for, Charles? That thing that push, it's like I've gone blind. Ah, where is it? The thing that you push down. 
I can't speak and I can't see anything. Is, oh, here it is. It's in the door still. There we go. I love tools because I don't have the best knife skills. So I'm going to, I'm just doing this to make it easier. And I'm going to put it in my blender and I'm going to take a quarter cup of mustard. Once I find my little, my little blue thing, you see that little blue thing? Ah. I got everything out. I did what's called mise en place and now I can't find anything. Chef, right. did you uh, put the seeds in there as well? Uh, no, I didn't put the seeds. Okay, so I can't find my quarter cup measure, so I'll use my third of a cup measure, but I won't put it all the way in. So it'll be about a fourth of a cup. So I've got my mustard. There we go. And then where is my fig vinegar? Here we go. This is a lovely one on, on grilled fruit or just a straight up dressing. There we go. Equal amounts. Generally, when I use California balsamic, I'm using equal amount of mustard. And we don't need any water because we have the apple. And so now we're going to blend again. needs a little more. So we've got two more recipes. So let me just get a little bowl to put that in. Uh, this may not be big enough. Put it in this. Not my most attractive bowl, but this smells so good. Uh, that would have been big enough. And so what's nice is this doesn't make a whole lot, which is really good if you uh, don't need a whole lot. Hi, Nan. Hey, Jay. How are you? <laughs> All right. So that's my apple fig mustard dressing. Got to rinse the blender. We've got two more recipes. The last one, stay till the end, is going to knock your socks off because it is a Sunday. We're going to make a Sunday. We're using our macerated berries as a topping. But first, I want to show you my potato salad. As I mentioned, all these recipes are from my latest book, Own Your Health. But I did a little variation on one of them from a suggestion from my sister. And so we'll see if that works. So this is the potato salad. And what I decided to do was roast my potatoes. So I've never done it this way, but I think it's going to be really, really good. And so uh, what I did is I first I cooked my potatoes in the, uh, in the pressure cooker. So they were nice and soft. I, I'll show you the potatoes I used. And then what I did is I chilled them and then I cut them into little cubes and I put them on this nonstick silicone sheet and I made like almost like little hash browns. So this is gonna be potato salad, but I used the roasted potatoes and I think it's gonna be amazing. I'll let you know after I make it. But I, and I know it works with non-roasted potatoes. And the potatoes I used, it was a 1.5 pound bag of these baby Dutch yellow potatoes, they're really creamy and they're really delicious. So the same thing that I did with the coleslaw, I'm doing for the potato salad, is I cooked my cauliflower, I steamed it, and put it in the blender, but this time I'm using dill mustard, and I already measured it right here. And I'm gonna be adding a few things to that after I blend. And you know, I don't want to keep you guys, so I, there was two things I didn't do in advance, so I might just tell you what they are. This recipe has two other ingredients, and I had a really busy day today, so I didn't get all my prep done. So rather than keep you, I'm just going to tell you the other two ingredients that go in here and tell you how I'm going to do them. It's a cup of red onion, and so what I'm gonna use is this tool called the Vidalia Chop Wizard, which makes it really easy to chop it all uniformly, and a bulb of fennel. I'm using fennel for the crunch because I'm just not a big fan of celery. I, I don't know, I just, I don't love it, uh, but I like the crunch, and so I'm using that instead. But if you wanted to use celery, you could. So I'm just gonna put my potatoes in the bowl. 
And then after you guys are done with me, or I'm done with you, I'm going to add my onion and my fennel and my dressing. But I'm not going to do it now because I don't want it to get all soft because this is what I'm going to have for dinner. But I also want to show you another idea. This was not planned. Uh, Charles, if you can get the champion juicer ready, you can unplug this. You can unplug everything. One of the things that's really, really fun to do, and we, we have burgers at least once a week. And by burgers, I mean a burger that's made out of plants. And since I don't eat bread, I love to make wraps. And my local Winco sells pre-washed organic collars with the leaves already there. And so what I love to do is to take a collard and instead of taking the time to boil water and then, you know, immersing it for 30 seconds, you literally have to just microwave a collard leaf for 30 seconds and it becomes soft and then you can wrap it up. And I was thinking maybe to do that with either the coleslaw or the potato salad because it's really hard to get people to eat greens, even harder than eating vegetables. So now, as they say in show business, it's time for the closing number or the piece de resistance. And we are going to make a sundae, but it's not a regular sundae. It is a sundae made with these beautiful macerated berries. And we're going to make it with ice cream, but it's not really ice cream. It's going to be fruit ice cream. So we've got our berries that have macerated. They're nice and glistening. This is going to be the topping. So what's the bottom of the sundae going to be? Well, does anybody know what my favorite food is? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Well, it's a sweet potato. So I'm going to take a roasted Hana yam, and you could also use a Japanese if you like. And you could also air fry this if you want it to be crunchy on the bottom. But I'm just taking a roasted Hana yam. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to open it like that. And now, oh my God, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make some ice cream. So the machine I'm using is called the Champion Juicer. And because I think it's the best one for ice cream. If you can't afford it, you can get in a less expensive machine for about, it's $49 called the Yonanas. If you can't afford it, you're gonna love this machine because it really does make the creamiest. I'm just gonna take this little skin off, even though it's organic, it's not that pretty. And my grandmother, who was a type two diabetic, who when I, she was alive, I didn't know any of this, never got to eat anything good, except like once a year on her birthday and anniversary. And then when she did eat something good, she used to say that it was a taste thrill. This is a taste thrill. You can do it without the potato base, and just by making ice cream. So I'm going to make it in two flavors. I'm going to make banana because I love banana and Charles likes cherry. So with this machine, you have bananas that you've already frozen. They need to be ripe before you freeze them and, of course, peel. And you just turn the machine on. Now I'm gonna add some cherry. If you haven't ever had this, definitely try this. Actually, believe it or not, my favorite flavor is grape, but not with the potatoes. So now I'm gonna add some cherry. So it's like I got two colors. It may not look pretty, but it's amazing. And then we're going to take our macerated berries. Let me get that uh, cleaned up a little bit. Again, when I'm, when I'm not rushing, I make it even more beautiful. To people that say the plant-based diet is boring and restrictive and tasteless, I've obviously never eaten at my house. Thomas, do you remember when you came here on the way to Arizona and I made this for you? You did do that. I've never forgotten it. It was one of the best desserts I've ever had. Oh my God, who wouldn't want this? I mean, these, these parents that make these smash cakes for their kid's birthday, shame on them. 
they could be in exposing them to sugar at one year old, their little delicate brains. They could be, the kid would have just as much fun smashing into this, I promise you. And if you wanted to finish it, you know, I don't know, maybe some pear. We could just take a little bit and just over the top. Boom, boom, boom. And there you have like the world's best Sunday. So um, I think I did it in an hour. I didn't start right on time. Um, so there you go. 12 sure. ways to use California balsamic vinegar other than the usual ways of salad dressing or sauces. Thank you so much, Thomas, for creating a product that I can eat, enjoy, and recommend to my friends and family. Uh, and thank you so much, Dr. Dysinger, for having the kind of practice where you offer this to your patients. It's like amazing. And I hope everybody watching will Get a lifestyle medicine doctor, and if they're in California, go to Dr. Dysinger because he is the best. Chef, you are a culinary wizard. <laughs> I'm a legend in my own mind. Yeah. So thank, thank you so much. And um, you did do it in 59 minutes. So I'm impressed. Uh, that many recipes that quickly. Um, it leaves us all spinning, but it leaves, leaves us all also um, excited to to try more of this and to, to, to try not only the food, but the, the California balsamics to, to get your book um, uh, where the recipes are, right? So we can get yeah, the I'm, I, I, Listen, I'm happy, I, I'm happy to give you the written recipes and just give me like a day or so. Wednesday's my busy day. Tuesday, uh, I'm happy to give all your patients the recipes. Um, and Thomas is happy to give everybody two free, when you say two free samples, you gotta order something folks. Uh, it's, I mean, he doesn't just give you two free samples, but when you order. But one nice thing about his vinegars, and I think he was the first company to do this, is when we get back to traveling again, these three ounce bottles can get through TSA. They will not take them away. They are plastic. They do not break in your suitcase. And you could have 10 of these and TSA will not take them away. Is that correct, Thomas? I, 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 I think it's the amount is whatever will fit in a quart size baggie is the number that you can put into a carry-on luggage. Nice. So that's it. So I get to eat this pretty soon. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, we really, really appreciate it. What a, what a gift to our practice and to our patients. And I feel like a gift to myself. Um, I wish that we could all applaud right now. If we, if we did, we'd all be standing applauding you. Um, but, but again, thank you so much. 